Hey everybody, it's Nissa, the hypnobirthing midwife. Lovely to see you today. Um, today I'm going to make a video about general baby care for newborns. So that's, you know, after birth and for about up to about the first six weeks. Um, and then they change and things change. So yeah, we're going to stick with the early days. Um, I'm going to cover lots of things um, and if you want more information on things like breastfeeding, um, sleep, washable nappies, slings, uh, you can hop onto my website thehypnobirthingmidwife.com and there's loads of free resources there, um, uh, written resources, videos, tons, so you can find out in more depth. Um, but what are we going to cover today? So we're going to cover really like the basics, but things that you might not know if you haven't had a baby before, like dressing, baths, um, safe sleep, SIDS, routine postnatal care, that kind of stuff. And if you hop on my website, there's also a list of all the things. It's kind of what do you need for a newborn and a new mum? And really looking at the things that are super useful and essential and telling you kind of what you don't need as well. So I have a, a big a big one and a nine month old. He's asleep upstairs having a nap. Um, hopefully he won't wake up before the end of this video. Um, so I've just been through it myself, having a newborn um, very recently. So I'm gonna give you some of the tips and hacks from my experience and also from being a midwife um, for quite a few years. So I'm gonna, it's a mixture and yeah lots of tips on my website as well so what shall we start with so let's think about dressing your baby so what's a good way of thinking about dressing your baby you want your baby to be warm um, but not too hot so of course it depends on what country you live in i'm in london but you might not be in the uk and also what season it is. But a really good rule of thumb is baby needs an extra layer to you. So if you're comfortable in a t-shirt, probably your baby will need a vest and a baby grow, something like that. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is a little vest. It's got uh, short sleeves and no legs. So that's what I'm talking about for a vest. This is not newborn. I think this is three to six months, something like that no zero to three months um so it will be a bit smaller than this and this is a baby grow um they get called different things but they're like all in one arms and legs so that would be a good outfit for a baby um, in spring autumn and then if it's getting chillier or it's a bit chilly in your house you'd want another layer like a, a woolly um cardigan or a jumper or maybe some little booties or something like that to keep um, them nice and cozy. Um, I think that people really worry about baby's temperature so a really easy way to check is to feel down inside the baby grow and check baby's temperature either on the chest or the back and that tells you their temperature well. You'll feel immediately if they feel cool to the touch or hot um, people feel their hands and legs, their hands and feet and think, oh, they're so cold. Um, newborn babies generally have quite cool hands and feet because their circulation hasn't fully developed. So don't feel like you have to add, you know, three pairs of socks because the feet will probably still be cool for a few, probably a few weeks. Um, so that's one good thing. Um, what else for dressing? Don't need hats inside, but it's good to wear a hat if you're going outside, um, especially if it's a, you know, cool. They lose their, a lot of heat through their head. It's a really big surface area. So if you're outside, um, that's, a, that's important, unless of course it's roasty, it's summer. Um, so that's something. Um, you get the, the woolly warm pram suits, they're quite thick um, and they're good of course if you're going out and about um, but you probably won't use it that much. I think we used ours like three times um, so it's a good one to get second hand from a friend or um, eBay or something like that. They just grow so fast so everything that's newborn just lasts 
you know, a maximum of probably three months, sometimes two months if you've got a chunky baby like me, or four months if they're a little bit on the more petite side, but not very long. And um, so, yeah, what else to think about dressing? Yeah, I think that's good. I think that's good. Let's move on to um, nappies. So there's a nice piece on my website about washable nappies, a guide to that, because that's a whole nother world. Um, but I'm gonna just show you the basics with a um, disposable nappy. Um, lots of people like to use these from newborn and then sometimes they switch to washable when baby gets a bit bigger, you know, to about four or five kilos. Um, this is a size four, so you would buy a newborn nappy for yours. Um, this is for my big, big boy upstairs who is now 10 kilos already. Um, so, how do we put on a nappy? So first of all, I must say, people worry about this, but actually mums and dads, once you've done about three, you'll be fine. It's not hard to do, I promise. You put the tabs, you've got those sticky tabs, they go at the back of baby. So you lay baby down on whatever you want to change your baby on. So you don't need to buy an expensive changing table. All you need is something waterproof to put on a table or your bed and to make sure that when you change your baby that you're coming down to their level, not bending, because you're after a while you put a bit of strain on your back. So here I'm just using this um, it's plastic on one side and you can put it in the washing machine. Sorry, baby. Um, and you might put a quilt underneath to make it a little bit softer, um, but that will be fine. Those changing tables that you buy, once your baby starts crawling, they will crawl right off them uh, around, what, six months, maybe seven months. Um, and then you can't use them anymore. So they're very short lived um, and probably not needed. So the nappy, Tabs go under baby's bum. This one's of course gonna be a bit big. Um, if you have a boy baby, you wanna tuck his little um, witty downwards because they, otherwise they'll wee up and sometimes wee up into their belly button or if you take the nappy off, wee, wee on you or their, or their own face. And you're gonna fold the nappy over. Now with a newborn, they're gonna have a sticky cord. The umbilical cord will come off with a clamp probably and it might be a little bit sticky and a bit delicate. So you can, up to you, but you can fold the nappy underneath the cord like so. Lots of midwives do it that way. And then you just bring the sticky tab around and the other sticky tab around the other side. How do you know if it's a good fit? So you'd put two fingers, just make sure that you can fit two fingers down um, and then it's not too tight and it doesn't need to be too tight and it goes under the cord. That can be good um, in the first couple of weeks. So that cord might be on for a few days up to a couple of weeks before it comes off. And you don't need to put any products on that cord at all. We don't recommend that you, if it gets really gunky and a bit sticky, use some boiled water that's cooled with a cotton wool bud and you can wipe around it, throw it away, wipe around just to keep it nice and fresh. Um, but it will, it will come away when it's ready. Don't worry, I know people worry about that. Um, so that's your nappy. Tips, so there are these, kind of um, side tabs and you need to make sure those side tabs are tucked out. You could go around with your thumb and tuck them out and that will help contain everything. If they're tucked in, that tends to be when you get leaks. Um, and if you start noticing you're getting leaks, then it might be a sign that your baby's ready for the next size up and actually the nappy is not quite um, containing everything. So that's one. Um, nappies. So you'll need something to clean your baby's bottom with. Um, I really love these washable cloths. Um, they're brilliant. So you just use one for a wee, you might use two for a poo, but sometimes only one is enough. Much better than disposable ones, which kind of 
smear everything around. These are great. And you just put them, you wash them in the machine. You can put them on a like a 15 minute quick wash before putting them in with everything else. And I'm not one for products, I have to say, but I really love, we've been using this kit. There's the clean wipes in the clean box. And then I won't show you inside here, but the dirty wipes in the dirty box. And you can use some really nice aromatherapy oils for each. Um, I've not had any nappy rash or any problems with my baby's bum. Um, and it's just nice to do something for the environment, not using tons of um, disposables. So that's been great. I've loved that. The brand for that is Cheeky Wipes. You could probably just use a Tupperware if you had one and buy the little cloths. Um, but we've really liked that. It's been, it's been a good one. Um, what else? So we've done clothes, we've done our nappies. How many nappies do you change a day? So, um, any poos, you change them. Wees, with a newborn, you wouldn't change every wee, um, probably, not even with a bigger baby. Um, but you want to change them maybe a minimum of four or five times a day so they're nice and dry and fresh. But you'll get a feeling and a bit of a rhythm of when you do it, like when they wake up in the morning and then it might be a few hours later, mid-morning, afternoon, before bed, maybe one in the night if you, if you need to, hopefully not, but yeah, you'll find a bit of a rhythm. So, I'm gonna take off my nappy. Let's think about sleep. So, again, a really good piece on my website about sleep rhythms, what to expect. I'm going to talk about the basics. So where is your baby going to sleep? Um, some babies sleep brilliantly in a basket and it is recommend that you, recommended that your baby will sleep in a basket or cot next to you or in your room, bedroom, for the first six months, recommended by the World Health Organization, the WHO. Um, but some babies don't settle well in their basket um, and lots of parents end up co-sleeping with baby in bed and so being honest and realistic it's important to talk about safe co-sleeping as well because I think most parents do a bit of both throughout the first year. So if your baby is sleeping in a basket, probably a cot is too big for a newborn. They won't like it, it feels scary for them because they're so little. And um, what would you have your baby sleep in? So they're gonna wear, if it's autumn, um, winter or spring, uh, the little vestie. Then they're gonna wear the baby grow on top. And then you can put them in a sleeping bag for, for a newborn. So this is one that my little one had um, that was given to us by a friend. So it was second hand. And they're quite good, the sleeping bags, because you don't have to worry about their babies um, the blankets going over the baby. So that's the thing that we have to be careful with. The blanket, we don't want blankets going over baby's face because of course that's not safe. So you can get sleepy bags for newborn. This one's a bit bigger. I think this one's um, three to six months. And they go in, the holes should be nice and snug so they can't wiggle down or wiggle anywhere. Um, something like that. This one, of course, is a little bit big because my baby's newborn. And you get them in different togs. So summer might be one tog, winter two and a half to three and a half togs, depending on how warm your house is. Um, we don't want babies to be too warm um, because that's a risk factor for SIDS, SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome. But we want them to be warm enough. 
So I, I'm a big fan of the CP bags. You can get um, CP bags that have a kind of swaddle function, so they have a wrap around, and that can be quite good for settling young babies because they're born with a startle reflex, the moro reflex, where they do, they do this and they do it a lot and they wake themselves up. So if you swaddle them lightly, it helps them not to wake themselves up. Um, actually, swaddling is not really recommended by the NHS, um, especially not tight swaddling because there's some evidence to say if you wrap your baby tightly, they can't move their hips, it's not good for their hip development. And you wouldn't want to swaddle a baby with too many layers because um, it will, they'll get too hot, they'll get too hot. So they need to move around in order to release heat. Um, so, how would you swaddle a baby? If you were to swaddle a baby safely, so you would, let's pretend this is my swaddle, you would do it under the arms, so under the armpits, so they can move their arms. So you would wrap one side over and then the other. And this is a little bit small, so you would need a slightly bigger blanket and it's just simply tucking them in like a burrito so that would go underneath so you imagine that would be with a blanket one two and tuck and you can tuck the ends under so they're a little baby burrito but they can still move their arms to release heat and there's nothing around the head because that's nice and safe and then for sleeping you want to put them so that their feet touching the end of the basket so they can't move down anywhere babies sometimes wiggle down but if their feet are at the bottom of the cot they can't they can't go anywhere um, always put babies asleep on their back and um, that's safer than on their tummies um, because newborns can't move their heads and we want their airways to be clear. It's really important that their airways are clear. So we put babies to sleep on their backs um, and then as they get older and they start to turn, you know, at maybe five, six months, they will choose which, which way they want to sleep. Um, what else to say for safe sleeping? So... We've thought about our basket, not too hot, um, not too many layers. And then what about if your baby won't settle in a basket? What do you do? You've tried and tried and tried and they only want to sleep next to you. Okay, so how do we do it safely? So we want our baby to have their own blanket, like a sleepy bag and there to be no chance that your blankets or duvets can go over them or over their face. So you need to make sure that they're separate and your blanket is far away from them. If you sleep with your partner in a, a double bed, don't be tempted to put the baby in the middle because that's the hottest spot. So you wanna put the baby on the outside, then you, mum, and then partner on the other side. Um, and what else for safe sleeping? Never if you've had a drink or obviously if you take any drugs or medication, it's not recommended because you sleep much more deeply. Um, if you breastfeed, if you're breastfeeding exclusively, you, your sleep will be much lighter and so you're actually very in tune with your baby. And breastfeeding mums tend to sleep with their babies next to them, often with their their arm around, which forms quite a protective um, shape. And it's like an ecosystem system. Mum and baby are in tune with each other. Um, and that can work really well for breastfeeding for the first few months. You're very responsive to your baby. Um, so people worry about co-sleeping and you just need to make sure you're doing it safely if you decide Either you want to do it or it's the right thing for your baby. Um, what else for sleeping? Hmm. Yeah, I think
think that's probably lots, isn't it? Um, yeah, you'll get to know your baby and you'll, you'll get a feeling of what suits them and, you know, each baby is unique. So what works brilliantly for one doesn't work for the next and you can try things but only you really know and you figure it out as you go along, I think. Um, let's talk about baths. So people are very keen to bath their babies, I think. Um, we now say that it's better not to give your baby a bath for at least 48 hours after birth because you wash off all of the nice vernix, that creamy substance that they're born with, which keeps them soft, and all of the good microflora that they've picked up um, during the birth. And we wanna keep that, because that's gonna colonize your baby um, in a good way, create a nice ecosystem for them inside their gut microflora. Um, so actually, newborn babies, they don't sweat, um, and you might not want to bath your baby for a while. You can top and tail, which just means a warm cloth, cleaning their face and their neck and cleaning their bottom, making sure that's all nice. Um, that's totally fine. Once you've decided, yeah, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do our bath. Um, it's really good to have a small bath to start with for a, maybe for about six months. Um, this is the one that we've used and it's got a little bump in it so a little newborn can sit there and they're fully supported. You don't fill it very full and you can do it anyway. You don't have to put it in the bathroom. You can do it like here on the kitchen table um, and a good thing. So you want to prepare for a bath. You want your nice towels, ideally maybe on the radiator if possible. Um, baby grow nappy ready for wherever you're going to dress your baby and um, nice body temperature 37 degree water which you can just check with your elbow um, it always feels a little bit cooler on your hand but the elbow is good and you check the water okay you're ready to go then you strip your baby down newborn babies do not like to be naked because they get cold so strip them quickly put your baby in let them rest a little bit maybe give them a bit of a wipe and then when you finish and it won't be long the first few baths maybe just a few minutes they get super tired with all that stimulation and, and the um, water and the lights and the sounds then at the end you can wash their head and face so you don't want to do that first because otherwise it's going to get really cold and they will not like the bath. But if you do it at the end and then you take them out, let's have a, let's do it, you take them out, you can wrap them up in your towel and they won't mind so much. So I'll put my little one in, I don't know if you can see, I'll be in there, just a little water, you know, sit them in there. I don't, wouldn't use any products with a newborn, no baby products, no shampoo, nothing at all. Um, they've got really delicate, sensitive skin. So I always think don't put anything on your baby that you wouldn't put in your body, uh, put in your baby. So what would you, would you put in your baby? Only milk, really. So they don't need anything at all for a while. Even actually my little one's nine months and we're still not using any products, bath products, because he doesn't need it just something for his skin afterwards. Um, so that's baby. Then you'd finish your bath, have your nice towel, wrap your baby up. Oh, so sweet. In the towel, dry them nice and quickly. And then you can pop on their nappy um, and snuggle them up in a nice baby grow and probably they're gonna sleep quite well after that. So it is quite good to do um, it of an evening, you know, they'll have a good, maybe I might have a couple of hours sleep after that, maybe more if you're lucky. Um, in terms of um, oils or creams, so um, sunflower oil is good. If they've got dry skin, they tend to get dry um, maybe a week or two after birth and they peel, the whole lot peels off. So a bit of sunflower oil, organic from the kitchen you know simple is good 
it's not too harsh. Um, and that's all you need, or you might prefer something like coconut or almond, you know, just what, what you like, really. Um, yes, so that's our bath, done and dusted. What else to say? So, so let's talk about baby's health. So what's a normal rhythm for a newborn? They're going to feed a lot, eight times or more, probably in a day, 24 hours. They might wee or poo. Um, quite a few times um, as the days go by. Day one, once, two, twice, three, up to about six, day six. They might be doing six wees a day, six poos perhaps, something like that. Um, but they don't do much else. They mostly feed, sleep, feed, sleep. They're pretty snoozy um, and that's totally fine. And things that to look out for, so signs that your baby's not well, um, baby's not waking up for feeds, you know, very sleepy, floppy, lethargic baby. Of course you, you strip them off and make them naked and normally they're going to wake up, you know. If they're, they've been asleep for, you know, four or five hours and they're not waking up, you think, hmm, is this, is this okay? It might be worth calling, you know, or even taking them to see somebody if you're worried. Um, so we want them to be waking for feeds regularly. Um, the first 24 hours they sleep more, but after that they're going to feed often. Um, weeing and pooing, so that's a sign that they're well. They're eating and weeing and pooing. Um, and generally, baby, newborn babies, their breathing is quite irregular. People worry. They tend to <sighs> pause. <sighs> pause that's really normal that's really normal um, and they breathe quickly so up to a maximum of about 60 breaths in a minute you know not often about 40 breaths um, they breathe quickly so if they're breathing very rapidly you can try and count and if it's more than 60 then you think ah oh, actually that's too much um, you could check their temperature up to about 37.2 is quite normal and over 37.3 is a bit of a fever. Um, so you, if they're running a temperature, then it's always good to get that checked out with a newborn. Um, other things to look out for, so uh, jaundice. New, newborn babies don't normally come out with jaundice, but they might develop it in the first five days after birth. So what is jaundice? It makes them look yellow and it's a buildup of bilirubin. So they have fetal blood when they're born and they break that down. Um, they have a lot of blood, extra blood. They break that down and the byproduct is bilirubin. And that's normally processed through wheeze and poos. Um, and if they're not getting it out of the system, it builds up in their body and it makes them yellow. And it makes them yellow. Um, and that's quite normal, but when the levels get high, then that's when we um, like to check to make sure that the bilirubin level is normal and not too high. And so normally it's fine, but it's something to keep an eye on. So if you think your baby's super yellow, um, not weeing or, or pooing, or the wees are very dark and the, the poos are very light coloured, um, they're very sleepy, they're not feeding, then that's a sign that maybe the levels are a bit higher than normal and you'd want to get them to see somebody. Um, other things, so rashes, Babies in the first couple of weeks, they get a lot of um, milk spots, little white dots, a little red, little rashes that come and go. They'll come today, they'll be gone the next day. I'm on the face, um, that's, that's really typical. Rashes that we are more concerned about are like a dark rash that covers an area of the body and when you press it, it doesn't disappear. So that's something you'd get checked out. Um, but the the other ones are fine. The little the little milk spots, they're okay. Um, what else to say? I think that's probably enough for this video. Um, and yeah, 
I hope you enjoyed guys and there's tons of other resources on my website thehypnobirthingmidwife.com. Lots of love, bye!